Although many might think of John Wayne as being the very embodiment of old-fashioned American values, the beloved Hollywood icon didn't find Jesus until he was nearly on his deathbed. Mere weeks before his passing, John Wayne passionately converted to Catholicism after having been raised Presbyterian and giving up on the faith soon into adulthood. Though his religious epiphany near the end of his life is often attributed to a note he received from the daughter of televangelist Robert Schuller, the actual story of why John Wayne had a change of heart remains slightly more mysterious. Join Facts Verse as we explore why John Wayne embraced religion and converted to Catholicism on his deathbed. Over the course of his life, John Wayne achieved the status of Hollywood icon. But in the final weeks of his life, he wasn't feeling anywhere near the hero the public viewed him as. Not only was the beloved actor's health suffering immensely, causing him to lose most of his weight and take on a frail form nearly unrecognizable to those around him, but he also found himself looking back on the excess and debauchery of his adult years and wondering if there was going to be a place for him up in heaven. The final weeks of his life were certainly a lonely and torturous time for the actor, as he had to grapple with both the legacy he was going to leave behind on earth and the afterlife that awaited him. By the time of his death in 1979, the hard-working John Wayne had starred in well over 100 films. He had taken on his first leading role in a feature film nearly half a century prior, 1930s western The Big Trail. John Wayne went on to make a name for himself, primarily in the western genre, but also in war films during WW2. He lived and died a passionate patriot, but he didn't truly find religion until he was on his deathbed. One of his most notable roles was in the 1969 film True Grit, which saw him win the Academy Award for Best Actor. John started acting during his college years, at a time when he was more focused on playing football than worrying about the future. As he dabbled more and more in acting, he eventually came upon the legendary director John Ford, and the two struck up a friendship. It was Ford who gave John Wayne his entrance into the Hollywood big leagues, with the former directing some of the latter's most successful performances over the course of his career. The two Johns remained great friends through their lives. While everyone knows John Wayne was a popular actor, few people know of his religious upbringing. He was raised in a Scotch-Irish family that subscribed to the Presbyterian faith. Because of this, he was raised to revere the word of the Bible and believe in God. But it appears those values weren't instilled strongly enough in the young boy, as he grew up to leave them behind and indulge in a life of excess in Hollywood. After John Wayne became a big star, he found the temptations of Hollywood were far too much for his childhood Presbyterian faith. While John was no monster, he certainly wasn't the epitome of a faithful man. He had three separate wives over his lifetime and didn't seem to be incredibly faithful to any of them. Besides those three wives, he took advantage of his Hollywood fame by taking on a variety of casual lovers, both inside and outside of his marriages. Maureen O'Hara and Marlene Dietrich are just a couple of the famous lovers John had. John was equally excessive when it came to his consumption of food, alcohol, and tobacco. He was rumored to have drunk a full bottle of alcohol before a meal and another one afterward, and could often be found chain-smoking cigarettes. While these two habits would have been bad enough in their own right, the meals John was eating weren't incredibly healthy either. The tough man he was, John Wayne arguably lived longer than most would have if they'd been living the same excessive lifestyle. But even Hollywood heroes eventually succumb to bad habits. At the end of his life, no longer able to find solace in his indulgences, the late Western icon was instead forced to seek salvation in Jesus. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around for more about John Wayne. Despite the fact that John had essentially abandoned his childhood Presbyterian faith by the time he found Hollywood fame, there was another religion that continued to exude a subliminal influence over him. This was Catholicism, which just so happened to be the religion of all of his wives, children, and grandchildren. Catholicism was also the religion of one of John Wayne's oldest friends, John Ford. Catholicism may have been everywhere around John Wayne, but that doesn't mean he took all of its messages to heart. But the pervasive faith seems to have struck a chord with him in some way because he decided to become baptized in the religion on his deathbed. By the mid-70s, John Wayne wasn't doing particularly well. The actor's final film was 1976's The Shootist, which John had infamously had a fairly hard time trying to film. An oxygen tank had to be wheeled around behind him, and the immense pain the actor found himself in by that point caused him to lash out at his co-workers on the picture.
Despite the immense turmoil production meant for both John Wayne and much of the creative staff as a result of his failing health, the film ended up being completed and released. But it proved a box office disappointment and not an ideal swan song. In 1978, John was forced to undergo heart surgery amidst an increasingly tumultuous battle with cancer. He had been diagnosed in 1965, and he finally succumbed to the disease in 1979. While John was on his deathbed, he made the decision he wanted to be baptized officially into Catholicism. Many have suggested this change of heart came from a letter written to John by the daughter of televangelist Robert Schuller. Wayne and Schuller were close friends, and it stands to reason the two would have been in contact around the time. But many question the validity of the story, given some details. If the rumors are to be believed, John Wayne found out that Robert Schuller's daughter had broken her leg, so he sent her a letter telling her to get well soon. When Schiller's daughter received the letter, she supposedly wrote John in return, saying he didn't need to worry about her as Jesus was already taking care of her. Supposedly, this letter touched John's heart so much, he immediately became saved and scheduled his baptism. Though this story is certainly potent, there are time discrepancies and other details that have caused many to believe that Robert Schiller's daughter may not have been directly responsible for changing John Wayne's heart. Still, John and Robert were close, and Robert's daughter did have her leg broken around the time this was all supposed to have happened. While John may have given Robert's daughter his well wishes and been touched by her story and positivity, it seems his decision to be baptized came from a more internal place. His decision to become a Catholic on his deathbed likely had more to do with the faith of his children and grandchildren. All of them had been brought up in the Catholic faith, and many of them took it incredibly seriously. They were the ones closest to the actor during his final weeks, and the influence of their faith likely greatly affected the actor. John died June 11, 1979, and his final appearance was at the Academy Awards ceremony in April of that year. During the ceremony, John had been tasked with giving the Best Picture Award to the film The Deer Hunter. Though he performed that duty admirably, particularly given the rapidly diminishing quality of his health, he had some qualms about the film being given the prestigious award due to the fact he disagreed with its anti-war themes. He was so frail at the time, he was said to have worn a wetsuit underneath his actual suit to look a bit bulkier than he actually was. The immense heat of this getup likely contributed to John collapsing after the show. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that John Wayne converted to Catholicism on his deathbed? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.